your fire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bowels of Spiky Ball Studios. We're live from the Dutch Hall. Yeah. Here's your host of the roast of Pete Van Dyke. It's Ty Greit, folks. Hey. Hey. Thank you, Paul. Welcome to Live from the Dutch Hall. We are Canada's only live to air late night talk show and the greatest podcast to ever come out of a pool shed in Pine Grove, Ontario, bar none. Because, of course, we have the greatest band in Canadian late-night history, the Nocturnal Emissions, everybody. Tonight, comprised of band leader on rhythm and vocals, Michael Bowe. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Subbing in for the tickler, we have Adam Hill on drum. Whiskey Wet Higgins as the balls of the nocturnal emissions on bass. And of course, Steve the Reluctant German on lead guitar. Let's get started, everybody. Welcome to the roast of Pete Van Dyke. started off on a weird foot. <laughs> he was yelling, no, no, when we started the song. I was supposed to say welcome to the Rose to Pete Van Dyke, brought to you by our sponsors, Fukushima Pre-Rolls. Yeah. Bow Farms Limited. Woo! Yeah, as, well as, that one. as well as Clean Flow. <laughs> Tonight, we have, uh, we have a panel of guest roasters. Please, off to my right here, we have Justin Gale. Yeah. Yes! A shaven favorite, Joe Botello. And 
Matthew. We're missing one. He, uh, I don't know if he didn't decide to come or he crashed in a ditch somewhere. But Matthew Ferguson, he might be joining us later if he if he fancies it. Uh, when he gets here, we'll cheer. We'll do it that way. And of course, the man of the hour, the special guest for this evening, everybody. Once again, it's Pete Van Dyke. goodness pete guest of honor on your own show go figure that's great because because it's your birthday isn't that right how old are you um he's not even sure you're 40 uh 46 46 years old everybody and he's still throwing himself birthday parties put your hands together for him oh my god it's not even an increment of five Turning on his own lights at his own <laughs> birthday show because he doesn't think I'm going to sweat enough in this ill-fitting blazer. <laughs> there we go. That, yeah, when people need to be able to see you better in your Pope hat. <laughs> He's everybody's special boy. You know, normally at a comedy show, if somebody's being really, uh, really obnoxious and they're, they're excited that it's their birthday, I usually ask how old they are and say, nobody cares. This is Canada. You don't get a party after 16 unless, you know, you, you, you've been hunted by assassins or you've fought a disease, right? And in Pete's case, I guess he has. He's, he's been dealing with cancer for the last little while now. And uh, Pete has cancer like I have a gym membership, you know? It's there, but it's not really working. <laughs> We're in the bowels of Spiky Ball Studios, a church that was purchased by our lovely... Our lovely man of the hour, Pete Van Dyke. Pete, you could have just bought a Corvette and saved us all the trouble. <laughs> this is a roast, people. I'm going to be mocking everybody. I don't know if they told you that or if my jokes just suck or maybe both. <laughs> I don't know what I can say here in Delhi. Seems like a sort of racist town. <laughs> sort of racist. Pretty much everybody in here is white. Except for Justin. <laughs> but you just look like a black guy saw a ghost. <laughs> you don't get to pull back at that Delhi. The only time you have people of color in your town is when you need them to pick stuff. Ooh. Ooh. They're harvest workers, right? Am I not right? You're not wrong, Tom. Right? You're not wrong. The guys, all the farmers like Michael Bow get all excited because they get some help on the farm, yep. right? And all the women get pumped because they finally get to catch a good dickin'. <laughs> <laughs> right? That definitely happens. I don't know if, you, if you've seen, you saw Paul earlier and Pete, they're brothers. Have you seen the tan on Paul? You think that's Dutch blood? <laughs> that's what they're known for, aren't they? That nice cafe mocha South Central American like tan. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Pete, I was in Delhi in February, sold out your theater. You can't fill up a AA's meeting worth of chairs with people, and you live here. <laughs> my God. That's, uh, to be fair, I didn't have a sellout when I did my hometown either. We were, we were empty four seats. And that's just me patting myself on the back. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to need it because we got a, we got a hell of a bunch of roasters here tonight. We're going to get this thing kicked off right away. What do you guys say? Yeah. yeah. Shall we? Do it. All right, we're going to get this kicked off uh, with our first roaster of the night. Uh, he's, he's a great friend of mine, and he's a great comic all the way from London, Ontario. Please put your hands together for the one and only Justin Gale, everybody. Hey. Hi. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you, Tiger Wright. Uh, doesn't he, give it up for Tiger Wright. Hi. Guys. You're a host. His jacket is ill-fitting. He looks like uh, if Prince and the Penguin... And a grizzly bear fucked somehow and <laughs> made all this. <laughs> Ty Wright, um, what a great guy. Uh, he toured with a great comedian named uh, Jeff Leeson. You guys uh, had Jeff Leeson come Woo -woo. nearby? Yeah, he's a really good comedian. Yep. Jeff Leeson toured with a not so great comedian, uh, Ty Wright. Uh, he's not. Uh, he did. Uh, he did a lot of. Uh, uh, he does a lot of shows with uh, uh, like all over the place and. 
Uh, he's really, really, really far up uh, uh, Jeff Leeson's ass, like just all the time. He's so far up that Joe Botello wants to lick him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Botello, everyone, he likes licking ass. <laughs> he loves, loves licking ass. If you don't know, if you know him for like one second, you know that he's Portuguese, he'll tell you. Uh, he loves saying that he's Portuguese. He's, he's Captain Portugal. Uh, it's like Captain America, but uh, the shield is made of uh, drywall. You know, it's a little different. <laughs> it's a little different. Not as strong. Uh, Joe Patel, yeah, he loves eating ass. This is what he, that's the second thing you know about him. After like 10 seconds, he'll tell you he loves eating his wife's ass. That's all he talks about Ooh. is eating his wife's wow. ass. And judging by the way he looks right now, uh, clearly neither of them wipe up after. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's dirty face. You got dirty face, Joe Patel. It's just like every time I see him, it looks like he, he just finished making out with Justin Trudeau at a Halloween party. It's just dirty on his face. You guys read the news? You guys heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> Shoe pops comes off pretty, pretty easily. Joe Patel, oh my God. And uh, so can I also just say, uh, it's just a bunch of fatties here. It's just all fat people and then the man of the hour. Just all fat people. It's ridiculous. So uh, we're we're doing fatty one and fatty two, and I'm gonna be I'll be fatty number three. You're gonna get a lot of fat jokes. So just strap in and get ready for that. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I'm gonna do some fat jokes of uh, Joe Batello. <laughs> Joe Batello <laughs> is so fat. You gotta say how fat is Joe Batello? How fat is Joe Batello? That his, uh, I don't know, I don't know the, I don't know, he's just really fat. He's gonna die very soon of a heart attack. This isn't a joke, this is like an intervention. He needs to start eating healthier. Joe Patel is so fat. How fat is Joe He's so fat that his wife is concerned. These are anti Joe. These are. This is how fat he is. It's not looking good. He's so Portuguese. How fat he is, Joe Batello. Joe Batello is so Portuguese that if he plays his cards right, he'll get promoted to Italian very soon. We're, lo we're all, we're looking for him. We're, we're reading for you, man. It's going to be good. And that brings me, of course, to the man of the half hour, hey. Pete Van Dyke. Let's give it up for Pete Van Dyke. It's weird. Uh, he's so old, man. I, it's just weird. Like at a middle-aged white guy invented, uh, invited three fatties. It's uh, it's Snow White and the Six Tits. That's that's what this that's what that's what this is. How is it that the guy that had cancer is the healthiest person on this dais? It's just bizarre. So crazy. His uh, uh, are you like are you are you dying or are you not dying? It's kind of. Eh? Okay, yeah, that's true. But I do, like, it, how is it? Is it going? Is it? Eh, it's it's. Okay, yeah, that's good. You are definitely tempting it, <laughs> wearing a, a pope hat. Uh, it's it's good news that it's you know it's not uh, imminent, right? Except for your family. Your, your family does wish that you die. You know that, right? You think you're on it? Like honestly, you think your wife is not rereading the will in a bubble bath and candlelight, like it's Fifty Shades of Grey? You don't think she's doing that? She's waiting, man. He, P. Van Dyke, uh, a, as you probably all know, he says it a bunch of times that he's only had sex with one person. He's only had sex with his wife. And everybody gets applause when, when he hears that. Oh, it's so nice. It's so sweet. He's only, only had sex with one person. I don't know, though, man. He had an entire uh, you know, lucrative career as a banker, and then he gave it all up to do stand up comedian, uh, to be a stand up comedian. You kind of fucked your whole family, didn't you? That don't make sense. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in all honesty, I, I'm so happy that uh, you're still alive and uh, we can make fun of you for <laughs> a few more years uh, until you finally croak. But uh, happy birthday, buddy. Woo! Woo, 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 woo! Hey, good job, Justin. Justin, Justin Gale, everybody. We got to get these transitions yeah. down pat. Problem introducing a, a new show format where everybody is also new that is on the format. <laughs> Justin Gale, those are some great jokes. 
by a guy that looks like Kenny Robinson after a stroke. <laughs> you look like Fat Joe had the top half of his head fill in. <laughs> and then he fucked the Mad Magazine guy. <laughs> is that okay? Uh, is, yeah. that, is that not? Why is everybody covering their mouth? <laughs> In all honesty, he's, he's a great guy. He's just been putting out really mediocre stuff, plus he does comedy. Oh, you guys don't know he's a father. Uh, I'm pausing for the laughs that deserves. I don't give a shit about what you guys think of my material. You said that I look like the pang. What was it, the penguin? Prince. And a grizzly bear. Dude, I look like Jesus Christ came back and said, this time I'm keeping all the bread. That's what I look like. <laughs> That's a great one. That's good. You should have used that. You should have done that. I look like Jagmeet Singh just without the turban and he gave up. Like that's... <laughs> I look like Jason Mimosa. No, you don't? A fat Jason Momoa? No? Just because it doesn't get her all hard or whatever. I don't know how women work. No one said fat? I'm fat. Sorry, live watcher, whoever you are. There's an audience behind the camera, and and they don't know how stand-up works. Uh, Pete, this may have been the most complicated way to have your entire family be concerned and also disappointed in you. You bought a church. Not only did you turn the pool shed into a podcast studio... And concern everybody when you said, I'm not being a banker anymore. But then you decided to buy a whole church and say, I'm going to record stuff in it that we're not getting paid for yet. (laughs) Yet. He says it like it's going to come real quick. (laughs) Well, because your wife's here. Dan. The Fukushima sponsor. He's not going to sponsor every roast after this one. I don't know if you noticed, Pete. (laughs) It's not going great. (laughs) A couple episodes ago, actually, I think it was a few months ago, uh, uh, Pete had accused Michael Bowe, the band leader, of, of touching kids. Just as a joke, and an offhanded comment, and it upset him very much. You were on holidays, I believe. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, it was real unfortunate. It was real unfortunate, and you were upset, and you, you, he had to apologize to get you back on the show, right? Yeah. Okay. That's how much, right? Accurate. This, this, just this dick saying stuff like that about you, and I was like, why would Michael Bowe, such a lovely man, get so upset about something? And I thought to myself, either he, it's true, and he's denying it ver- fervently, which there's no way. Look at him. He's a wonderful man. He's a cherub of a gentleman. Or he was molested as a child. I'm assuming you were a hot kid. Real, uh, real right? knockout. Just trying to be a good Catholic boy, right? Going to mass, singing your songs. It's not your fault, Michael. Nope. It's not you. You were just trying to do your best. But here's your supposed friend. Friend. Not only, the ball's on you, Pete, to not just buy a church, but then force your friend to come back every week to relive that pain. (laughs) Jesus Christ, Pete. (laughs) Speaking of pain, speaks volumes? Oh, oh, we're getting, we're getting, like, voted on? Yeah, yeah. There's so much to this show I don't know that's happening. (laughs) That's how we want it. You want to host the show? Sure. <laughs> Nothing, like, no information. <laughs> that's right. Good luck. It's like, you want to drive the bus? Where's the steering wheel? It's that's, outside. That's every week for us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think it's about time we introduce our next act. Uh, he's been on the show, I, I believe, all, four or five times. More, maybe? Oh. He's your, he's, your, he's your favorite weirdo. Please put your hands together for the one and only Joe Batello, everybody. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, I'm like, every, uh, my beard's gone. I, I shaved it. Just getting ready. Pete dies so I can eat Chance Pussy really good. Just <laughs> eat it so good. He's dying very soon. She told me one day she likes a clean-shaven Mike look to it when Mike Bo. Do you know she? No. I asked her before the show which, if she was a teenager and Nocturnal Emissions were a real band, because they're, they're not a real band, but if they were a real band, 
Negative five. They're a real band that knew how to play music properly. Uh, and she had a poster of them. Who would she have? She said Mike. And that's disgusting. It's like one of your. I would pick Charters. I would fuck the shit out of Charters. <laughs> I would fuck the shit out of Charters. Charters. He's not even here because he's a coward. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably dressed like a priest just getting ready to fuck kids. That's what he's probably. <laughs> All right. I like charters. All right, I wrote like one joke about Justin. Justin Gale, uh, how's it going? Justin Gale is uh, uh, half black and uh, half white, if you guys can't tell. Uh, he's so white that he doesn't think twice about running in front of cops. He just, one person that helped me write the joke, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. You're a really nice guy, you have a beautiful kid. Um, Justin married a Chinese lady, which is pretty typical. Every black guy I know loves Bruce Lee, so it's either a big fat white woman or a Chinese person. I mean, it's not really, he didn't really think twice about it. He's just like, yep, Chinese. The whole time, uh, the whole time, <laughs> it's real life. Yeah, black guys like big fat, fat white women or Chinese people. Ah, the show's gonna be canceled after this for sure. All right. Nope. Tig right. All right, Tig right. Tig. Tag right looks like the first draft picture of Tony the Tiger if Tony the Tiger was a flaming homo. <laughs> Thank you. Tag right is uh, is real fat. Um, he actually works. He, he's a good worker. I've uh, I've, I've heard about him uh, in the trades. Uh, but Tag right. Doesn't have to do any labor because he writes the coattails of Jeff Leeson so much he doesn't have to touch the ground half the time. Just you guys don't know who that is, so it doesn't make any sense. It's a <laughs> really funny guy that he opens for. All right, I, uh, at the end of the day, I just I just don't like uh, I don't like Tig really. Like on paper, I should like him. He's loud, he's brash, he's racist, and he has a beard. We're like the same guy. I should really like him, um, but I just don't. Um, I mean, Tig, Tig right makes his wife so sad. I won't even fuck her. You know what I mean? And I love fucking people's wives. That's all right. Thank you for the <laughs> Matt Ferguson's not here. <laughs> oh, the you want me to tell him that? All right, all right. Hold on, I got a good one for Matt. Matt Ferguson has a lot of tattoos. All right. His tattoos look so retarded, they're sponsored by the Special Olympics. I could say that my, my kid has autism, it's okay. They're so bad, it looks like my daughter tattooed his, all right, all right, you guys just hate me. It's like I, it's like I just walked into a, a town hall meeting at Interkip and they're just fucking all those cows they fuck. You know what I mean? You know how in Interkip every Sunday night they just grab all their animals and just start fucking them, you know? I love Interkip, guys. Great. I make a lot of money. I, uh, I sell bestiality porn, and it's, a, it's the best place to... There's a back exit. I'm fine. I can, I can leave. Inter <laughs> Interkip is a great town. Reminds me a lot of Portugal. Um, they, they actually, did you know, it's one, voted one of the most safest towns in Canada. They never had uh, Me Too incidents at all, because it's not rape if you fuck your sister. Um, <laughs> just came up with that one. Thank you very much. Fuck you. Yep, we fuck your sisters. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. It's a little too hard, I think. All right, Pete. Uh, Pete, I love you so much, dude. Uh, not, not funny. <laughs> You're just saying that because I, I put a spotlight on the fact that... All right, that's fine. Hey, You're, Joe. It's I your love fault, you. not mine. I love you so much. Um, <laughs> Pete bought a church next to a high school. If it doesn't scream, I want to fuck kids, I don't know what does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, you're back on the board. He keeps you're back on the board, buddy. <laughs> Thank there you. you go. He keeps talking about the kids he's watching sitting and littering, like, sure, as he fucking shacks off into Kleenex. Um, <laughs> Pete looks like... Pete looks like his wife should have left him a long time ago, but neither of them can find the receipt. <laughs> that was a soft one. Yeah, I know. It's too hard. All right, too soft. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I actually wrote some the Hold on. All right. Does she love him? 
That's a 10 from Jane. <laughs> Did you all give me a 10? All right. Um, no, I'm not going to do that one. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, wait. There's one right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, sorry. So bad. All right. Uh, Pete, Pete's heart is so black from selling bad mortgages to farmers that it killed cancer. That's how black his heart is. Uh, Pete married the first woman he fucked, uh, which is, I mean, some people think it's cool, but whatever, I think it's stupid. But, uh, but that doesn't stop him from sucking off everyone from nocturnal missions every Thursday night. All right, there's a lot. Of, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really a nice guy, all right? So one about his depression. I won't do that one. That's too harsh. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, Pete's... Pete's banking days were like the Wolf of Wall Street, except he was the ferret of Farm Credit Canada. <laughs> Nobody is more attentive to Pete's cancer than me. I actually go uh, with Pete to some of his doctor's appointments, and when he leaves to get his pants back on, I just whisper to the doctor, I was like, how long until I get to fuck his wife? That's what I... There's <laughs> a lot of wife fucking jokes in this, right, guys? It's the way I, I win them over. Yeah, they're all zeros. I don't care. It's fine. I don't have a beard. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> Might as well kill myself. I'll, l I'll let the interkip guys fuck my mouth to death. I don't care at all. <laughs> moving your podcast, Pete, from a pool shed to a church is like moving your homemade tea cozies from the flea market to an abandoned Zeller's. No one's going to buy it. No one cares. All right, that's enough for me, guys. You guys hate me. Uh, I just want to say thank you, P. I I love you so much. Uh, Good job, I love Joe. everyone here, guys. You guys are amazing. I, I hope you're around forever. Thank you. Good job, Joe. Oh. Joe Batello, everybody. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what do comedy crowds and buffet owners have in common? They what? all, <laughs> both of them can't wait till Joe gets the fuck out of there. Joe Batello, you fucking wop. <laughs> you mocked what I do for a living. I was a mason. I lifted granite. And what do you do now? Uh, roof? roof? You keep posting shit on Facebook. I keep seeing it. I don't. I just, every time I see you post a picture of you at work, I'm like, wow, a loud Portuguese guy that's overly proud of his menial labor job. How refreshing. <laughs> His material is as entertaining as a fire in an orphanage. <laughs> Joe Batello, you look like a troll doll after a fire. <laughs> what was it like meeting Chris Hansen? <laughs> I just turned off our camera <laughs> operator. You don't fuck kids. I'm not saying that you fuck kids, Joe. Of course, I would never say that. I'm just saying that you have kids for the same reason somebody that fucks teddy bears goes to build a bear. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> is that okay? Is that it? I'm gonna flip through my notes here. There's so many. I don't know what's more sad. I know, I know. I, I, what I was going to say is I don't know what's more sad. Pete trying to follow his dream, or you thinking you can do stand-up comedy? <laughs> Should I go? I'll get off Joe. That's not fair. Those are a bunch of jokes for other people. I just repurposed for Joe because all comedians are round and like, generally the same looking. Steve, I dress like I'm in a band Eberhard, the reluctant German. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> hey, that was real timid. Good, buddy. That was real timid. <laughs> Oh, they give you flack for being German, but I bet you're over there just burning to tell a Holocaust joke, eh? <laughs> it's funny that they make fun of you all the time for being German, but you know how long it took the, G the Germans to break into Holland? Five days. <laughs> and then the Dutch were just like, wait, so our bagels will suck and the banks will be open on Saturdays? Okay, come on in. <laughs> That's a history joke. You guys need to know history. Two people pretending that they know history. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
I think we're probably done. The only material I have is for a man that didn't show up, and I didn't want to keep going on about you there, Michael. I was going to say something about Wes. I wanted to make fun of you, man. I really did, but I'm like, ah, oh, you're already a bassist. So <laughs> the... <laughs> I think it's probably about that time in the show where I... Uh, does anybody have anything else to say? Before we, we bring up the man of the hour, does anybody have anything they need to say? What's the thing in the weddings? If so, anybody should have any reason that this man should not grab the microphone, please speak now or forever hold your peace. There it is. Clean Flodo to joke as well. We'll tell that after Steve. How about that? Are you just going to tell it from over there? Oh, very informal. I like it. You like that? Yeah. I like that? All right. Uh, so uh, thanks for coming out here tonight. Uh, Spiky Ball. Woo! Uh, you know, uh, Pete works his ass off around here uh, when he's not napping in the actual bed in his office. <laughs> uh, but uh, the neighbors know how hard Pete works, uh, mostly because they have to look at his god-awful truck all day long sitting in the parking lot outside. Did everyone uh, see Pete's yeah. truck on the way in? All right, uh, so for those people at home and for those who missed it, uh, Pete's truck is the piece-of-shit Ford uh, in the parking lot. It's missing half its front bumper, and uh, <laughs> it looks like it's being held together by, by some duct tape. Anyway, uh, that's not even part of the roast. This is just the sad reality of, uh, of Pete's uh, car affair. Anyway, um... <laughs> 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 Give him a score. Hey, so I don't do this for a living. <laughs> Just one? Better ah, than yeah, yeah, yeah. It's plus. It. I'd like to make a note that somebody in the audience just said that that was better than Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Pete's truck is so fucked up, it looks like it's, uh, like it's committed multiple homicides. <laughs> Pete's truck is so beaten up that it, it looks like he plowed into a gaggle of bike riding migrant workers. Oh. Seriously, Pete? Oh. Where'd you hide the bodies? Jesus. That's that's bad. That's bad. That's bad, but good. There you go. There you go. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, Pete's truck is so shitty. It actually sort of fits in nicely in Norfolk County. Uh, you can see it on uh, most Friday nights in downtown Simcoe, trying to buy uh, opioids, <laughs> or at least sucking dick like it wants to buy some opioids. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, in, term of, uh, in terms of long-term health forecasts, it's pretty fitting that Pete and his truck have so many things in common. Uh, it's actually to the point where I'm not sure which one I'm going to find dead on the side of the road first. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, Steven. Steve, the reluctant Steven. German, everybody. He's on fire. Thanks, Pete. We love you, Pete. Bring in the heat. <laughs> that was good. All the way from well, I think it's probably about time for our sponsor's joke. We have a joke brought to you by Clean Flow. It was forwarded to me, along with uh, payment information for the sponsorship for the show, but I won't read that part out. <laughs> this is from Clean Flow. I saw Pete's dick once. <laughs> Clean Flow. I saw Pete's dick once. It wasn't small, it just didn't reach past Charter's mustache. <laughs> Why were they in the room? <laughs> Can't remember, but they were there. This will make it taste better. All right. I think it's probably about that time of the show where we, uh, we, let, our, we let our birthday boy, guest of honor, man of many things with the Pope hat, uh, have a few words and defend themselves. What do you guys say? <laughs> All right, so let me bring up to the podium the one and only birthday man, Pete Van Dyke, everybody. Hello. Hello, people. Hey. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. <laughs> this has kind of been like a fantasy of mine a little bit to have this roast. We tried it last year and everyone bailed, and then this year, almost everyone bailed. <laughs> so it's way much an improvement. When you can get like half the comics who agree to come, come, that's like a success. I think we got... We got... 60%. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, you did good. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, as is a tradition on Live from the Dutch Hall, the people that didn't show up, like Charters, Ooh. I'm going to let the tickler off. Cause uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Fuck Chambers. Fuck Charters. Fuck, fuck charters. 
That is right. Charles didn't show up today. And so I got one joke, <laughs> one joke for Dave Charles. We told this at Charter's Roast on his 40th birthday. I told an old joke. Uh, Steve, you remember it, right? I told it to you today. It was a simple uh, joke. And it was uh, something along the lines where I said, Charter's, as you know, is a staunch Catholic. I s he, um, he still can't uh, pass a pedophile without kneeling down and opening his mouth. <laughs> You know, that was the joke, something like that. And Charis said to me, why do you tell that joke about me? Why do you tell that terrible joke? And I said, because one time I saw you at a Catholic mass, and you took the host in your mouth. I didn't know one person take the host in their mouth, right? You take it in your hand. Yeah, that's right. It is odd. An old lady or whatever will take it in her mouth, but not a... Not a young guy like Charters, you know, take a fucking host in your mouth. So that stuff sticks in my brain, you know. <laughs> I see Charters and I say, why did you take it in your mouth? He goes, well, I used to take it in my hand, uh, but it just tasted like stale bread. And then when I kneeled down and opened my mouth, you know, he goes, uh, it tasted like stale bread some of the time, but like one out of every ten times, it tasted a lot like cock. Okay. <laughs> eh? <laughs> hey, can we just give a round of applause for the thing that ate, ate Tag Tig right for hosting tonight? He did a great Woo! job. There you go. Stop, Tig. Blindfolded. Thank you. You know, if you guys think you recognize Tig, it's probably because you've seen uh, blurry pictures of him taken from people in the forest. <laughs> right? Ty, you Sasquatch-looking motherfucker. I don't know. That was just a, that was just a note I had. <laughs> you know, when, uh, when Ty got married to his wife, he, uh, he looked a lot like Ryan Reynolds. This is true. Ty looked a lot like Ryan Reynolds. Afterwards, he'll be proud to show you the pictures of himself because he was gorgeous, right, Ty? Yeah. He looked just like Ryan Reynolds, and now he looks just like Burt Reynolds. <laughs> You know, the rotting, bloated corpse of <laughs> Burt Reynolds. Eh? <laughs> That's what I... Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, Burt Reynolds is dead. It's like Tig's playing a game with his wife. It's like, uh, how gross can I get before she'll start stop fucking me, you know? It was six months ago, right? <laughs> Ugh. Tig referred to himself as Jesus Christ earlier. You remember he compared himself to Jesus Christ when you were saying that? You know, I think Tig does have a lot in common with Jesus Christ, you know? They're both in the trades, right? You both became charismatic public speakers, right? You both have the hippie long hair and beard. And God willing, you'll both be dead at 33. Huh? <laughs> Justin Gale is here, everybody. Let's hear it for Justin. He did a great job tonight. <laughs> Justin, what fucking color are you, man? I don't know. I look at you online. I follow you on Instagram. Sometimes you're like a fucking white guy with a red beard and freckles. Other times you're like... Uh, a real black guy. Not a real black guy, but like high yellow, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. A black guy with freckles, you know? He looks like uh, he's the son of Morgan Freeman and a potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He looks like... Uh, he looks like... He <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. <laughs> Uh, he looks like uh, <laughs> he looks like a le he's a he's a product of a leprechaun fucking a teddy bear, <laughs> eh? That's cute because he is cute. You know, Justin is actually a sweetheart of a guy. He works with children uh, that aren't his, you know, <laughs> and then he's like super super sweet, like almost like where you're like, mm, it's a little bit too much, you know, like there's something else. Like, any guy that, like, volunteers to work Cubs, but they don't have a kid in Cubs, it's like Justin, just I'm saying. 
You don't choose to be around c kids unless you... That's right, Joe. <laughs> it's gross that I hang around with these people. Like, no, at no part in my life before I started comedy would I hang around with a person that finishes this <laughs> sentence with, what do you do when you hang around kids? Fuck them. That's what Joe said. Joe goes, fuck them. That's what you'll do. You fuck those kids. And I'm like, no, Joe, you don't fuck kids. You don't. In the banking world, no one would answer the question, that question with fuck them, you know? It was frowned upon in the banks. You don't. Don't do that. Justin, you freckled face, motherfucker. <laughs> you look like the uh, inside of Tigrite's toilet bowl. You have the complexion of the inside of Tigrite's toilet bowl. That was the joke I wrote. I fucked up. God damn it. You look like you uh, lied under a screen door and hired a hooker to shit on your face. Speaking of pieces of shit, Matt Ferguson isn't here. Huh? What? Can I not say that? He didn't show up, right? Matt's actually a good guy. He stuck up for me a lot of times online. You know that that's a really... I used to be... I was a two-time two fucking times. President's <laughs> Club Award winner. And now when I get trashed online, the only person that sticks up for me is a, is a drug-dealing felon with a tattoo of an anchor on his face. <laughs> yeah. That shows you fucked up. <laughs> Anyways, I, I know he's not here, but I just like that one. <laughs> I also like this one. Matt Ferguson's got a tattoo of uh, Hulk Hogan on him. And I was like, I wanted to ask him, like, Matt, if you wanted to get a tattoo of a guy that likes rolling around in his underpants with other men, why don't you just get a tattoo of Joe? <laughs> it's way less racist. What else do you want a tattoo of? Paula Dean and Dog the Bounty Hunter? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, this, I still want to tell this joke. It's my favorite. D uh, Ferg like, made a lot of money, and then uh, he's all of a sudden rich, right? So, uh, But he's not like real rich. There's another term for it. There's like another way to describe the kind of rich that Ferg is because he's blowing through his money real quick, you know? It's like, I think it's called uh, Half a Justin Gale Rich. <laughs> no? <laughs> Is that too much? <laughs> He's Ferg's going through his money like Tig Wright going through lube on a Jeff Leeson tour. Oh. <laughs> huh? That's a lot. <laughs> Ferg, if he would have shown up, would have been the blackest guy on this show. <laughs> right? He's been in jail. He uh, he loves sneakers, and he fucks hot white chicks. <laughs> More than you, Justin. Joe's the darkest guy in skin color on the show. No, I think Paul. He is. is. I think it's hilarious that Joe can't get gigs in Toronto because he's a white straight man. He's neither of those things. He's not white or straight. <laughs> he says he's not gay, but he's at least one of those like plus signs at the end of the acronym. <laughs> By now, <laughs> he's something. <laughs> Let me see here. <laughs> Speaking of man on man sex, uh, Joe Botello is here. Let's hear it for Joe. Joe. Wasn't that wasn't that terrible for everyone to watch? <laughs> it was my favorite part. Joe, thank you so much for bombing for me on my birthday. It is one of my favorite things in life to watch my friend bomb. <laughs> and I just, uh, I just love it. Joe, um, <laughs> Joe is such a guy that is uh, so close to me. I would like to honor you in more ways than just with jokes, Joe, tonight. Tonight we've actually wrote you a song Whoa. that we like. Uh, it's not a whole song, but it's at least half a one. Joe Bethel, I don't know if you know this about him, but Joe has had more men's fingers up his ass than a charter's puppet. <laughs> <laughs> uh? 
think you fingered both? Uh, I did all those. Anyways, that is it. I, I just wanted to uh, tell my band there, Nocturnal Emissions, they're the greatest band in the world. Steve tonight told jokes. That's awesome, Steve. I don't Stevie! Know. It's Woo! like, so it's only fair that if Steve was going to tell jokes and I have to play guitar because that makes it even Steven. And uh, no, I'll bring that over there, Michael, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, is that okay? So we're going to play this song. It's, it's, uh, and then hopefully if you guys want to stick around, we can uh, have a good time tonight. This one, um, Joe, it's all for you, buddy. I really hope you like it. It's called Batello. <laughs> I did. Let <laughs> 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 deck the mic. There we go. I don't have a pick. Okay, you guys might recognize this song if you've watched us perform before. It is a bit of a sing-along. Everybody would be more than welcome to sing through it. I don't uh, have many skills on the guitar. It's two chords, that's all I play. Uh, we wrote a song um, uh, about 20 years ago called Eduardo, and uh, this one, we've changed it a little bit. We call this one Batello. with his life he tries to fuck everyone's wife and a couple of fellows Botello. everybody for coming tonight thank you to the nocturnal emissions and to uh, the cast and crew of the show thanks to all our sponsors there's some door prizes afterwards stick around we'll announce it uh, thank you again